morning. It's Thursday morning, and uh, even though it's 10:24 Thursday morning, it still looks and feels like I woke up like I did at six this morning. <laughs> it's very, it's been a very slow morning, which is fine with me. Um, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a singles post, uh, do my ABCs sort of, and it's not complete because. I still got my singles sort of separated between uh, singles that I collected from like up to about the 90s and then um, I've still got a box up here uh, and a couple boxes here that have um, singles that I've been collecting over the past maybe two or three years. So they haven't been integrated in with my older collected singles and I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. I might want to keep them separate. And that sounds crazy. but. Because everything is pretty much in alphabetical order of the older collection that I've got. But anyway, um, not to drag this out, just wanted to kind of go through some of the highlights of my ABCs. I'm not going to show every single 45, it can make you crazy. Um, but to start off with uh, um, Alphaville, Big in Japan. It has been so long since I've listened to this, I don't even remember what Alphaville sounds like. So I've got to put this single on and listen to it again. <laughs> But it's uh, original U U.S. pressing. Uh, it's backed with seeds. I just remember I liked the band and I liked this song. So Alphaville, Big in Japan. Um, I don't think it's anything too extreme one way or another. Pretty straightforward, 80s. Uh, I don't know, what year did that come out? It's not going to tell me. 84. So kind of in that new romantic era maybe I gotta listen to it again to find out um, this is kind of a neat Mercury split single and I believe this was probably a jukebox single um, it definitely is a re-release one side has blue cheer summertime blues the other side has blues magoos we ain't got nothing yet and it, I'm pretty sure that this is a um, this is a jukebox single only because I got a whole bunch of really cool singles one summer when a friend of mine over in Port Angeles said, hey, there's this guy, um, he listed in the newspaper saying that he's got, I think he may have had an auction house, I'm not sure. But he had at this big uh, uh, house or, or, or a, uh, a structure outside of his normal living house or whatever. He had kind of like an, uh, not really a barn, but just a, just a storage structure that was built and then a side structure off to that was adjoined to it it was attached to it and went in and he had a whole bunch of stuff all over the place and it's definitely kind of a rummage kind of sale place so you could go in and walk through but in the back he had this one room that was attached about the size of my living room maybe a little bit smaller um and it was just full of 45s you know crates of 45s boxes of 45s just shelves and shelves and shelves all the way up to the ceiling back every on the floor everywhere and most of them if not all were um jukebox 45s and in some cases the, the records are in the wrong sleeves or they were just sleeves or they were just records and my friend and i spent the entire day there going through and just grabbing sleeves or matching up records with sleeves of everything that we could find that we wanted so it was a lot of fun we got a lot of records for and, she, and this is probably you know, that, that Blues Magoos one was probably one of them. And I've got a few more that were part of that as well. Um, got a lot of David Bowie. And uh, uh, from the movie Labyrinth Underground. It's probably it's my favorite song from that from that album, from that movie. I, I liked it. It was a good movie. I liked it a lot. Um, these are U.S. pressing, EMI America. Um and a uh, great song, Underground, and then character from the film. Nice. Um, lots of Bowie. This is kind of an interesting... I try to have everything in order, but in this case, this is kind of a little out of order. This is a, a UK pressing. Probably got this um, at a record show. But it's a nice small hole. Um, it has, it's, it's an EP. It has Heroes, English version, Heroes, French version. And then on the B side, it's got Heldon... German version, Heroes German version, and uh, V2 Schneider. So interesting combination, same picture on both sides. 
and the RCA, RCA Victor. Uh, but it's definitely a British pressing, I believe. So it's kind of a neat. That was a nice Bowie pickup to find. Oh, now where does it go? I don't think it really doesn't matter. I've got a lot of these organized in the right way. It's a nice, again, a US pressing of Without You with the uh, herring artwork on the cover. And then on the back side, it's got a nice shot of Bowie. Criminal World is the B side. Got a lot of soundtrack music from Bowie. Uh, Absolute Beginners. This is a nice UK package, Don't Look Down, and Tonight. But it has something extra with it. It's either got a poster or... I need to read... There's a... I don't think I've ever... I may not have ever unbound the uh, sticker that's wrapping this. I'm not sure. 1985, uh, America, uh, Division of Capital Records, blah, blah, blah. blah. Um, love, oh, okay, yeah, and then it's got, all right, the A side is Loving the Alien and the B side is Don't Look Down. These are special mixes and then from tonight, but it's a gatefold. It might have a poster or it might have another disc with it, I'm not sure. I really don't want to pull it apart to find it right now. This is Not America from The Falcon and the Snowman. I got a lot of, I've got a lot of his movie singles. I think it's because I didn't want to buy the individual albums, so uh, soundtracks to the albums, I just bought the singles of the songs that I liked. And uh, there's more Bowie, 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 pretty straightforward Bowie stuff. Um, you know, the Let's Dance single. But as we're getting backwards, we're going to get into what's more interesting. Here's another movie 45, Cat People, Putting Out Fire. I like the uh, his Let's Dance version of it a lot better uh, than the single version of the you know the soundtrack version that was used. It was a different mix. The guitar work was different. I really like the guitar work. I, I'm assuming that um, Steve Ray Vaughan played guitar on the on the soundtrack album version as well. But it just sounds different, and I really like Bowie's Let's Dance uh, version of it on that album. Um, 45 from White Light White Heat of White Light White Heat from the uh, Ziggy Stardust film. It's another film, 45. White Light, White Heat on one side, and Cracked Actor, both from the live album. So, let's see. Let's see. I've got too many things crammed in here. Now, here's one. This probably came from that... Um, that uh, batch of album or batch of 45s that I was going through because here's the uh, jukebox label right there on the bottom here for uh, David Bowie's Right and Fame from the Young Americans album. So it doesn't say anything special on here on the label, it just says it's from the Young Americans album. Otherwise, it's just the standard straightforward 45, I think, without a picture sleeve of any kind. But it does have that jukebox label, which is kind of neat. Found some of those labels and some they just weren't there for whatever reason. Um, I need to get these put together in the same sleeve here, but this is a nice original US um, Space Oddity picture sleeve in relatively good condition. I think I had this from way back when. And then the uh, 45, which is in mint condition. I need to get it into a proper sleeve for the 45 though, so that it, they're both together in one happy sleeve a little crowded in this case I need to open this case up a little bit more might be looking for some more things to uh, hold on is a nice this is from when I went over to uh, the UK in 87 I believe I went to a record store called Cassidy's and for one pound I got mint condition this nice 45 of uh, round and round and um, drive-in Saturday from one of my favorite albums. This one says Drive-In Saturday, Seattle Phoenix, in parentheses, which I think that's what kind of caught my eye. I don't know if it's that way on the album or not, but it says Seattle Phoenix, Drive-In Saturday. Thanks, Dave, for more <laughs> mentioning Seattle. But, um, but this is from Aladdin Sane. It's one of my favorite albums of David Bowie's. And then Round and Round is, I don't know if that's on the covers album or not, Pinups, but I'd have to take a look. Anyway, this came out in 73. <clears throat> it's the date that's on here and the Cassidy's sticker on there. I wonder if that record shop is still there. I bought a number of things from that place. 
uh, because their stickers are on there. And I got a bunch of James Brown 45s, which is very cool. And one thing I like about the James Brown 45s is he has his picture on all the labels, <laughs> which I think is great. Here's an RCA Victor sleeve, but it's nothing to do with the Polydor label with James Brown's picture on it here. And this is, um, I got ants in my pants, part one. And I'm guessing I got ants in my pants, parts 15 and 16 <laughs> on the piece. <laughs> nice. Part one on one side, part 15 and 16 on the other side. Uh, I have a number of James Brown's singles. With parts one on one side and parts two on the other side. I forgot about that being parts 15 and 16. So, let's see. Yeah, I got a bunch of uh, James Brown. These might have been collected in that uh, uh, that auction shop or whatever it was uh, over in Port Angeles. But here's another James Brown on King Records. Cold Sweat Part 1. James Brown and the Famous Flames. High Fidelity. Dynatone. King's Records. And then on the other side is Cold Sweat Part 2. I had, a, I had an album once, a double album, that I bought that picked up, uh, that I put together all these, you know, parts one and parts two, so it was one long song. And I, I, I know I don't have that anymore. I'm sure it was replaced when I saw the same album on CD came out and I sold that. But uh, it's one that probably on my uh, list to find. These are in great shape. This one's got a couple little scratches on it, but for the most part, I mean, this looks, this is King Label. This is an original. And it's in great shape. And it's, you know, I just love having these originals. Um, not that there's anything wrong with re-releases, but when it comes to, you know, the originals, there's just something about it, the history that's behind it. Um, here's something, here's another King. This is gonna be end up being a James Brown 45 poster, I'm afraid. <laughs> but these are all in great shape. It's like they've never been touched. Um, this label's a little bit worn. This one's Bewildered. Backed with um, Brother Rap, part one and part two, part one and part two together. And it's actually, looks like two songs. You can actually see a band between them. So, but again, it's a great label with James Brown's face on it. I love that. So I've got to get these uh, digitalized right off of my vinyl. That'd be fun to do. Um, I just want to grab a few more here. Uh, the James Brown. Yeah, this one. I thought there was a song just called Popcorn. Well, this one's called Mother Popcorn. And of course, it's uh, Mother Popcorn Part 1. And then on this side, Mother Popcorn Part 2. So, no picture sleeves with any of these, but on the original King label. And again, with um, James Brown's face there on the label. It's very cool. I don't think there's a date on this. Curious. Playable on stereo or mono, but it is stereo. Anyway, distributed by Star Day King Records Incorporated. So, here we go. Oh, just did that one. And, uh, let's see. And then to follow up with the popcorn, uh, let a man come in and do the popcorn part one. And on the B side, the song something. Sometime, excuse me, sometime. Again, on King Records. So those are all my James Brown records. You get to see all the James Brown records. <laughs> um, let's fly through some of these. Kate Bush. I have a lot of the later Kate Bush 45s. Um, in, in that ridiculously long post I made, about 40 minutes worth, I showed the Kate Books. Kate Bush box, uh, 45 box, and I collected 45s beyond that. Um, this one from, oh, I can't remember what it's called now. This is the Big Sky special, special single mix, Kate Bush. This one was um, Experiment 4. These were all from, her, it was one of her big breakout album, which was ridiculous because her earlier albums are great. Hounds of Love. And cloud bursting. I pretty much have the whole set of 45s that came off of. You know, some of these are U.S. Some of these are imports. So, just great. 
There's another one. I think this is a U.S. copy. Yeah, EMI America. Crowns of Love. And Running Up That Hill. U.S. press. U.S. copy of the single. Um, the Birds. Nice promo copy. What's Happening. Backed with Mr. Spaceman. This is the nice Columbia sleeve. But it's got the white and red... Columbia promo label, nice X on one side, play this song apparently at the radio station, but they didn't play very much because it's in just incredible condition. That's a big plus for me. I'd love to find a promo or an original of uh, the Gene Clark song that he did with the birds on the, I believe their first album. Maybe we got it here. They got Mr. Tambourine Man and I Knew I'd Want You. Oh, Feel a Whole Lot Better. Probably my favorite bird song, Feel a Whole Lot Better. Maybe I've got it here. You Ain't Going Nowhere, and Artificial Energy. These are just standard Columbia issue. I think that might have a hole punch. It does. It does have a little hole drilled in it, so some kind of a cutout or a promo. Cars, you might think. These are pretty much U.S. pressings. I don't have a lot of cars, I don't think. There's a nice Johnny Cash 45. I walk the line. I'm curious to know what condition this is in. It's been a while since I've looked through all these 45s one at a time and just really checked them out. It's not bad condition, considering. Um, a little bit of a scratch there, but overall not bad. A little more cleaning, and this will be in really good condition. But uh, I walk the line on Sun Records, backed with uh, Get Rhythm, Johnny Cash. So I'm pretty sure this came from that collection over in Port Angeles that we got to dig through. It was many years ago. That was way back in the late 80s, I think. I think. I'm not sure. Uh, great, great classic garage song. The Castaways doing Liar Liar. And the back the song called Sam on Soma Records. It's such a great classic. I think I'm pretty sure this is on um, Nuggets. LP collection. Soma Records Company in Minneapolis, Minnesota. But Liar Liar, great song. And it's in great shape too. I'm amazed. <sighs> oh, doggone it. This is what I was afraid of. I lost my place. I lost my place. I was going to pull out just certain ones I was going to do, and I thought, I, I started going, you know, this is becoming a mess. I'm just going to plow through them as I see fit. And Black Rose by Eric Clapton and his band. Oh, this is one that I got there, because you can see the, um, the jukebox sticker there. And I can't stand it. Eric Clapton and his band on RSO Records. And another one, Willie and the Hand Jive. And... Um, Mainline Florida. I'm pretty sure those came from you know where. Uh, Phil Collins Against All Odds, another soundtrack 45. Sadly, and I don't understand this, this is my only Julian Cope 45. I don't understand, I honestly don't understand that because this is, I, I really, really like Julian Cope um, in the 80s and the 90s. Don't know why that's the only 45 I have of his. It's a U.S. pressing, but uh, those of you who remember Colorfield, kind of a post-New Wave, New Romantic band. They're, I think their albums are going to be re-released on CD, um, uh, remastered with extra tracks and whatnot. A friend of mine is telling me that. And uh, this is really, this is a very annoying 45 for one reason. It's just wide enough that no sleeve I can find will it fit in without it you know, being so tight that it might damage the cover. So it sort of lives by itself. It's a double 45. Um, nice, actually, nice photo. Great songs. Uh, Castles in the Air, Your Love Was Smashing, and then I Can't Get Enough of You, Baby, and Castles in the Air Instrumental Mix. So very cool. I think it's from 85. Yeah, it's from 85. So color field, that's my only color field 45. Surprised. And then we get into a whole bunch of Elvis Costello 
and the attractions. Um, pretty much all imports. A little bit of everything. This one on stiff records. Some of these are just recently bought. Welcome to the working week. It's a great 45. Love that stiff 45 label. It's one of my favorite albums of his. Uh, this is called Man Out of Time and uh, on the F beat label. And this is from uh, Imperial Bedroom. Uh, it hurts. To, I, got something wrong with my shoulder here and so to do this a lot is killing me <laughs> and the best thing about it is the alternate version of town crier which is a, the thing about elvis costello is you find out later on when they started doing a lot of re-releases you found out when you started buying his 45s and started looking at the b-sides he would have completely different versions of the same song and so on the album town crier is this really slow almost ballad like song uh, with string arrangements and everything and then you get this uh, the Man Out of Time single, and you put on I'm the Town Crier, you figure, and it says alternate version. It's okay, well, how alternate can it be? Oh, it's totally alternate. It's like this funky, upbeat, fast paced dance song. Uh, it's just great. You know, I'm going, whoa, what? Huh? what? Wasn't expecting that. Very cool. Very great, great version of the song. I like the original version as well with the uh, dramatic strings that come in. Uh, the Coward Brothers, I believe this is Nick Lowe and Elvis Costello, and I gotta stop doing that. Uh, so this is a nice little import on, uh, I think this is Demon Records, on the Demon label. The People's Limousine. I think that's with him and Nick Lowe. This is uh, Elvis Costello and the Attractions from Head to Toe. I think this was a single only. And on the back it even lists. And then, yeah, single only. This was not on an album. This was from Head to Toe. And the B-side was The World of Broken Hearts. And on the back it even lists, interestingly enough, uh, some places where he's going to be playing in 1982. September 11th, Southampton, Gaumont. The 12th, Oxford Apollo. 13th, Birmingham Bingley Hall. Sheffield City Hall. Manchester Apollo. Edinburgh Playhouse. So I just, and it goes on and on and on through all the way through the middle of early October. So it's kind of a one off, interesting, you know, time specific 45 with all those concert dates. Party, party. Um, again, this is a, an import uh, with large hole in the back for a change. Elvis Costello, I think this is very early, less than zero on the Stiff Records label. Nice. Uh, as I lower my arm, because this is killing me. Yeah, that Stiff Records label, love that Stiff Records label, great. Um, and I gotta speed it up. This is gonna turn into another 20 minute clip, and I was hoping to do this fast. Um, still in the Elvis Costello world. And I'm gonna just try to rip through some of these. Let's see. Skipping through a lot of Elvis Costello. I got a lot of Elvis Costello. <laughs> some promo 45s that came with albums. Here's another early one that I left out. I'm pretty sure this is on Stiff. In fact, it's got the Stiff label on the back. Great photo of the band in the back, of the Costello and the attractions. And then a different Stiff label, though, but interesting nonetheless. And it's kind of an EP, Watching the Detectives on one side, and then Blame It on Kane and Mystery Dance on the B side. I don't know if it's um, if they're live versions or just what. Uh, it could be that they're just from the album, but I was, it's a great. 45 cover, manic looking Elvis Costello. <laughs> looking at the prices here, these are like two pounds, three pounds each. It's kind of cool. Uh, this this is kind of nice. It's um, I believe this is just the it's Steve Naive, the uh, keyboard player from the Attractions, uh, that played for Elvis Costello. And it's um, Outline of a Hairdo. Steve Naive plays theme music from Outline of a Hairdo. <coughs> Excuse me. On F Beat Records. Composed and played by Steve Naive. Featuring page one of A, Di a Dead Girl's Diary, Sparrow, Sparrow Crap, and The Tap Dancer. So, and a very cool F Beat 45 label. It's unusual, don't see too many of these floating around, but I was sort of picking up anything related to Elvis Costello for a while there. 
I've got some other Elvis Costello as well. Um, I think I've got an Attractions. I know I have their album. I think I have an Attractions 45 somewhere, but I don't know why it's not included here. Local band, The Cowboys, from 1981. There's a lot of local music that I've got in here. Keep the arm down. It hurts. <laughs> Engineers Reed Rudy and Ian Matthews, uh, yeah, recorded Case Smith Studios, 1981. Don, if you're watching this, you probably could chime in on the Cowboys. You know a little bit about the history of Case Smith Studios. Uh, side one, Rude Boy. Uh, side one, and then side A. She makes me feel small. I guess they didn't want to tell people or tell the radio stations that this is the A side, this is the B side. So it's side one and side A. So, very cool, 80s, early 80s, wave, local wave band. Cramps, of course, you have to have the cramps, and you can't just have the cramps, you have to have the cramps. Great, all very, very, it's just, it's like, it's like it's uh, just, covered with plastic. It's just very, very shiny. I mean, the whole thing is just laminated with plastic. Very cool. And um, oh, let's see here. Clear vinyl. One side is Georgia Lee Brown. And side one is Can Your Pussy Do the Dog? 1985. Anyway, very cool 45. Again, I'm surprised this is my only Cramps 45. I don't know why, but it is. And why do I have two of these? Let's get rid of that. Let's put this in here. Oh, yeah, I can tell this is going to be a 50-minute uh, post, probably. Sorry about that, folks. And I'm skipping over things, too. <laughs> well, I got a few left to go. Hopefully these are interesting to look at. Interesting for me to look at. A number of Cre Creedence Clearwater Water Revival 45s and Fantasy. No. And uh, I remember picking this up as a kid. Crosby, Stills, Nash, Young, Ohio, and Cost of Freedom. I thought it was interesting that they, they printed the... Uh, They printed the lyrics on the sleeve, and then the Bill of Rights on the back. Very cool. On Atlantic. So, those are, that's, this is a very cool 45 from way back when I started buying music originally. You know, I mean, I was buying music, but this is when I was sort of getting a little older and a little more, oh, I need to start buying some of this stuff here. Now we get into what we've been listening to a little bit. Um, been hearing the cure playing in the background and I've got a whole bunch of cure uh, why can't I be you this is a double 45 it's got the uh, it's got a little tape piece around here to keep it held together I carefully peeled it away got the discs out on fiction records and uh, it's number 427 limited edition from 1987 and it's, uh, what do we have here? We've got a Japanese dream. Um, well, why can't I be you on the A side and then the Japanese dream on the B side? And the second disc, it's six different ways live and push live from the film The Cure in Orange. So, and I have a number of Cure 45s. I think this is the the oldest Cure 45 I have right here. I generally organize my 45s oldest as you're going through oldest to the, well, let me rephrase that. When I mean oldest, I mean the most recent released. In their catalog, it would be their oldest. I guess that doesn't make any sense either. Um, but Then the uh, U.S. release of why can't I be you with a Japanese dream? In between days, the U the UK pressing of it. Backed with the exploding boy. 
So I just thought that was a great cover, colors on that. And even the label is very, very cool. So, and that's what we're listening to right now is um, Head on the Door, which is probably my favorite Cure album. And then, of course, In Between Days with Stop Dead as a B-side. This is the U.S. pressing of it, U.S. release. Uh, closer to me, UK release. Uh, another great. I don't know if the reflection is bad on this or not. I don't know how well you're able to see these. But um, yeah, I love the great artwork on one side and then all the information on the B side. So. Do, 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 the Cure. Should have collected more of their 45s, but um, I did get some good ones. The ones that I got, I did get some good ones. And we're coming up to some of those right now. The Cure of the Walk. And this one is, is a poster that folds out? Yeah, this is the poster that folds out. I'm not going to fold it out all the way. Oh, might as well. This is great. Very cool poster. Hold it up this way as well. Fingers crossed. I have it back in the way it went in. Something doesn't seem right. Let's try it this way. That's the way it goes in. So the poster release of that. This is another one of those 45s here that is just not made to go into a sleeve. This is uh, the Cure, a single. The Hanging Garden, 100 years. And a forest killing an arrow. Which I'm going to have to find a better sleeve to put this in. But this is uh, Fiction, Fiction G15. I always thought that was a great 45. And there's a, there's a 10 inch of this that has everything on it on one 10 inch um, disc. I would love to get my hands on that. But uh, a little pricey. I keep my eyes open for it though. But straightforward Fiction labels on these. So. Anyway, hopefully this is the end of the seas. That's the end of the seas. Hopefully we're not into 20 minutes. I think we are, though. Anyway, thanks for sticking around. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Like I said, I skipped a lot. I'll uh, progress through my collection as I see fit and as I can make these um, posts. Uh, keep making posts. If you guys got singles out there, Derek, I've been enjoying looking at your singles, and um, that kind of prompted me to do all this and get a singles post out. I really enjoyed watching you showing your singles. I've got a lot more to go, some obscure things, so not so obscure. But anyway, uh, take care, everybody. Good Thursday morning to you or whenever you watch this. And I'll be back soon. I'm going to be taking a little trip to a record store I don't get off to, get to very often. So fingers crossed they'll have some things that I was hoping that they would have. They they set out a little post on, on uh, Facebook last night that they got some... Um, that they got some uh, Ghost Box record company records in, and I'm hopefully going to get there and, and pick up a few of them. So, anyway, uh, take care. I'll see you folks later. Bye.